select the major product of the following series of reactions. So if we look at our starting material, we can see that we have two esters. Um, and then if we want to take a look at these reactions, we're going to go step by step. So we're going to look in the first step. We have sodium methoxide. So the first thing we want to do is recognize that that is sodium plus and methoxide with a negative charge on the oxygen. And so this is a base. And so what we want to do to figure out how this reaction starts is we want to look at this molecule and figure out where the most acidic hydrogen is. And that's why we started this chapter looking for the most acidic hydrogens in molecules. So if we're looking here, we've got these two esters, and in between the two esters is where you have your most acidic hydrogens in this molecule. So this is where our methoxide is going to remove a hydrogen. So it is going to go ahead and grab one of those hydrogens and put an anion right here on the carbon in between the two carbonyls. So we're going to form this enolate. And that enolate is stabilized by resonance with both of those carbonyls. That's what makes that the most acidic hydrogen in the molecule. Now, if you're comfortable with this deprotonation step already, and you can look at it and just picture, okay, this is a base. I know I'm going to remove a proton. Um, and you can just jump right to that enolate structure. Feel free to do that if you're just looking for the product. Okay. Um, so once we form this, this is a nucleophile. And if we look at what we're adding in the second step, it's an alkyl halide, and that is an electrophile. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw the structure of that alkyl halide. So we've got the two methyl groups attached to the same carbon. So that's that CH, then we have a CH2, and then the bromine. And so the carbon that's attached to the bromine has a partial positive charge, and the bromine has a partial negative charge. So this is our electrophilic carbon, and so the nucleophile that we formed in that first step can react with this electrophilic carbon. So we're forming a new bond and we're pushing off the leaving group. So you might recognize this substitution mechanism as something that you saw in the first semester course. Um, and that is a nucleophilic substitution. That's what the SN stands for, concerted reaction, um, two molecules coming together. So that's an SN2 reaction, okay? And so we have formed a new bond via this SN2 reaction between this carbon and this one. So I'm gonna number to keep track of my carbons. I'm gonna put a number one right there and then see um, how many carbons I have added. So one, two, three, and four. And I'm not ignoring that methyl group. When I draw the product, I'm gonna make sure that I have that methyl group still on carbon number three. So let's go ahead and draw this. So I started by drawing that enolate structure. This was carbon one, so there's carbon one, two, three, four. So I'm gonna go ahead and number those, one, two, three, four. And off of carbon three, we do have that methyl group. We don't wanna forget that, so let me make sure I put it in there. All right, so right here, this is the product of step one. This is the product of step two. And now in the third step, We've got aqueous acid and heat. And we saw in a previous chapter that carboxylic acid derivatives like esters can be hydrolyzed under these conditions to give you carboxylic acids. So when we do this third step, the first thing that's gonna happen is we're gonna hydrolyze both of these esters to the carboxylic acids. So I've got the two carboxylic acids and the chain that I added with this SN2 reaction. So this is the first product in step three. And then what we wanna recognize is that we have carboxylic acids and one, two, three carbon atoms away, we have another carbonyl. So I'm gonna number from this carboxylic acid. I could have picked the other one just as easy. One, two, three. So carboxylic acids that have another carbonyl at the three position can decarboxylate when we heat them up. So what that means is to lose CO2. So to draw the product, we just need to picture that this is the part of the molecule that's going to be lost. Okay. And so when we take that off, we're going to be left with 
right? That original carbon one that we started with here, two, three, for the piece that we added. So we formed a substituted carboxylic acid. So if we take a look at our options, um, we've got a couple carboxylic acids here. We wanna pick the one that structure matches what we're looking at here. And we can see that that is option B.